the third book in the Storm Runner trilogy. Hello, fellow book questers. It is I, Aaron the Book Quester, and today I am here with the Shadow Crosser by J.C. Kerr Servants herself. And well, let's get right on to it. Zane. Zane Opiso, our main character, the Storm Runner, son of Huracan, the god of fire and lightning, and of the storm. He has a strong right leg where he can draw power and shoot fire from his hands. Pretty cool, huh? He's a god board, which means he is the son of a god, and he is very, very strong. And meanwhile, he's currently trying to find the last godborns on the list to get them to Shiham. Shiham is the acronym for a super safe. Maya headquarters place where these godborns can be safe, protected by the power of the gods. And okay, so Zane finds the last two, last godborn, and they happen to be twins, Alina and Adric. And then Zane realizes that well, the demon that he that was accompanying him, well, she was a traitor, and the demon tried to go for Zane and tried to eat Alina and Adric, and that demon really seemed to want something that Alina and Adric had in their possession. What did they have? No clue. So, finally, after a brief fighting sequence, Zane, Brooke, Alina, and Adric, they managed to grab the twins and get them to Shiham, and they are safe. And then, however, on the way, when they're going to Shiham, Whatever the stone was, the stone that Alina Adric had was taken from them in a surprise attack. And due to this, they aren't sure what to do about it. Why was the stone so important? What did it do? Finally, Alina and Adric revealed what it did. It was called an entry stone, and it could unlock anything. This also meant that this stone could unlock the defenses of Shihan. Which is, well, really bad considering all of the godborns are here. However, that doesn't really matter, does it? I mean, all of the gods are literally just standing here. They are almighty powerful gods. They can just smite them if, if, they, if they come for us, right? Right? Well, before that, a lot of the godborns are, well, claimed by their god parents so they can have their full powers. So, Alina and Adric are found to be twins. Um, daughter and son of Ixtab, the goddess of the underworld, which is pretty cool. And it is found that Adric has the ability to walk in dreams and take memories. Meanwhile, Alina has the ability to open warp gates, which is also really, really cool. Then, one day, all of the gods disappear. Zibnata, they have been taken, captured, somewhere or sometime. And... Without the gods, immediately an army of demons and all sorts of bad guys led by Ixgik and Kamatons, the two evil gods, started attacking Xi'an. And pretending that it was just a training exercise, they managed to evacuate most of the godborns onto a property, and then they come up with a plan. You see, there's a calendar called Keen. Keen is a calendar in which you can look at anywhere, anytime, ask a question and you can find out the answer. It is like the magic Wikipedia. And in order to get the key, they need to go to an underwater submerged cave where there is a small air pocket. However, it's in the middle of magma, so is it really possible though? I mean, we have Alina who can open warp gates, but like, even if we get there, we'll die. However, thankfully, we have Louie who has the ability to summon snow. So together, Louis, Zane, Brooke, and Alina, and of course, the daughter of Pacific, the time goddess, who is, in fact, the person who owns the calendar, Keen, Ren, this team goes down to find Keen. And after a couple of trials, they manage to find Keen. And using Keen, they find out that the gods are trapped in the ear 1987 in California. So they need to go back in time. How do we do that? And after asking the last remaining god, they realize that, well, obviously our dear Ren is the daughter of the time goddess, Pacific. 
and you see, Ren has a watch. A watch is a magical item that she can use to stop time. Within the watch, there are strands of the time rope, or the rope that binds time itself together. And with these strands, they can travel back in time. But they only have two strands, and usually four is necessary for a complete round trip. However, this is not a time to fret about technicalities. The world will end if they don't complete this quest. So they take the risk. They throw the dice. They grab the two strands, and they use it, and they go back in time. Now, however, there is a catch. Two people on each side needs to be able to grab the strands and they will go through a lot of pain. And these are called the Shadow Crossers, the ones who hold the two time ropes tight in order for them to manage to come back. And this is the people who does that is Marco, the son of the war god who is the strongest there. And also Hondo, who is, you know, the Zane's uncle, pretty cool guy. And he has a mask that was given to him by his now all love, and he can use it to enhance his strengths and basically carry the last strand on the other side. And so Zane, Brooke, Ren, and Marco, all of them together, they quickly go to try to find the gods. And they find they find the gods in well in a goddess in on on this place. On, on a boat, on a boat of the Hero Twins, which are in fact the villains, you know, but in the present they are the villains, but in the past they were still villains, but they were sort of just chilling, they weren't doing anything. And they need to get past the Hero Twins without being seen because that would screw up the past. Oh, by the way, I forgot Adric on the list, by the way. And together they need to grab the gods out. And after a brief fight scene where Zayn and Brooke kiss, ooh, they fight, and Zane uses his power and knocks the bad, bad guys back. They manage to get the gods out, barely, mind you. And they get out, and they go back in time. And even though she does say they are spotted by the Hero Twins, Adric erases their memory, and they are out of there. And one thing about, about the Shiham, Shiham is up in flames. The Spark Striker, and the last of the god, la the last god, the dragon god, the moon, the great moon god, all of them together are fighting, fighting at the bottom, trying to fight off the demon army. However, obviously, they are, there are not enough of them, and they have been beaten. And even when the gods are released from their prison, they are all teenage and weak. They have, they are not back to their full strength. And because of this, they are unable to, you know, just wreck the faces of x -Kick and all um, those guys. And apparently x -Kick basically trashed her comrade, who was Kamataz, the god of bats. And basically, x -Kick is the endgame. He wants Jordan, one of the hero twins, to become king of the Mayan universe. Which is really, really not good. She wants to rewrite history itself so that everyone will believe that her son Jordan is a rightful king of all gods, which honestly sucks. And Zane doesn't know what to do. I mean, she's the one, she's the only one who can correct history. However, because he has the dragon power, dragon scribe power from the moon god, from the god of literature. And he can't really do anything. Like, what is he supposed to do? The, all his friends are gone. And no, he's aren't. his friends aren't gone. Pacific, the goddess of time, she still has the time rope. However, she is not able to use its power. Therefore, she hands it to her daughter, Ren, who is able to use the power. And she grabs it, and she uses it to put those two in a time loop. And manages to capture x -Kick and the hero twins. And they beat them. They are done. And finally, we have beaten the enemy that we have been fighting for two bucks. And everything's good. However, some of the godborns are missing, and some of them want to become Mayan gods themselves and not listen to their parents, which is not a good sign, mind you. 
And, well, things aren't looking the best, but at the very least, they've done it. They have saved the world, and they don't have to worry about a thing for at least a little bit. And at the end, Brooke, says, Brooke asks Zane, um, by the way, you know, that kiss back in 1987, did that really count? You know, I mean, and Zane doesn't, doesn't really know where this is going because he's really dancing. He's like, uh, um, yeah, I mean, I guess it doesn't. And then Brooke says, unless, and Zane gets the catch, they kiss, and finally, the main character and the main girl character gets together. Wow, congratulations, guys. And with that, well, on that happy note, the book ends. And a couple of things. The Stormrunner series, a uh, trilogy, probably has the most similar writing style to Rick Riordan's actual work, which is one of the reasons why I love the Shadow Crusher and the Stormrunner and the Firekeeper so much. However, that is obviously not the only reason. They are really, really good at, well, combining these myths, because obviously the Hero Twins myth exists. However, she, uh, the author has basically twisted these myths to her own advantage, and that's what's so great about this kind of book, about Rick for your presence itself. And I also for heard that there's another Korean myth book in Rick Riordan Presents, which I'm dying to read, that's not apparently available in Korea yet, but don't worry, I'll get to it, don't worry about it, and anyway, it was such a great book, and just like that combination of just romance, of fantasy, of these great battle scenes, like, as a writer, as a person who wants to be an author, I definitely know how tough it is to write really good fight scenes, and I feel, I feel like this book also accomplishes that well. And all in all, it is such a great book. I would recommend this entire trilogy. And like always, your book quester, I'm the book quester. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a great day. Subscribe. And like I already said, give this trilogy a read. And if you haven't read the other Rick Riordan books or the Rick Riordan presents, present books, well, first off, you're sitting under a rock and you're also missing out on a lot. So read them.